All right, what's good, SML? Welcome back to Stone Searching. We're here for our third episode. Uh, I'm joined by by my other two co-hosts. Uh, we got Clink and Q. What's going on, boys? What's up? Yo yo. What's up? Uh, excited to uh, to do this. We got some cool topics today. Uh, we're gonna cover cover three topics, and we are going to wrap things up with the first edition of uh, of SML Come On Man. So that should be a should be a fun segment. Obviously, we're at the beginning of our season. We're uh, about halfway through week three so a couple things to uh, to talk about and the theme of today is is going to be uh early season overreactions so for our first topic here uh we have you know two other nfc guys on the panel clink we'll start with you can anyone stop dump in the nfc the short and dirty is yes um the question is when i think uh you know looking at his schedule he's gonna roll through his, his regular season pretty well you know, I got him winning probably 14 or 15 games. He's got a, a relatively weak schedule uh, to start. But we've all seen Dump in the playoffs. He has yet to be able to turn it on last Madden, Madden previously. Um, so don't know exactly who it's going to be, but I have full confidence that Dump is going to find a way to choke it away in the playoffs and, and not be in the the Simbardi Bowl. Um, but, you know, there, there's some, some good teams out there. I think uh, surprisingly Q at 3-0 with the Lions. If he can develop that team throughout the season, they can definitely give him a run for his money in the playoffs. Um, and I think also D Muse. Um, played him pretty tight. This is real. His first real test dumps. And uh, looks like he won by you know, 14 points in that one, but it was a, a pretty high scoring affair. And I could see that coming back to to be a little different if Demus could figure out that defense to, to slow down the Cardinals offense. So I think there's two really good options that can stop him in the NFC. Yeah, that was a that was a crazy back and forth game. Kellen Mond putting up four hundred and thirty five yards passing. Uh, certainly didn't see that coming. So Q obviously, you know, you're you're sitting at three and oh. What's your what's your take on this in the NFC here? Uh just like what Clink said as well, um, I, I think that he's going to win 14 to 15, even more. He could win more uh, regular season wins. So nobody will stop him in the regular season. He's going to put up numbers. He's going to de- uh, dev up Kyler Murray to an X factor. You could already see it now. He's, you could tell he's going for that as well um, by you know passing it heavy and still using it on the ground with his feet. Um, but I think in the playoffs and come playoff time, when you get down to the nitty gritty, you play a little bit tougher opponents, you do run into a guy like Demuse. He comes to mind. Um, like you guys said, he put up some numbers. Obviously, dumped it as well. He put up 49 and he put up who knows how many yards. Um, but Demuse showed he can score on him. He showed that he can move the ball on him pretty easily. If he can shore up his defense, which uh, he's known for being a better defensive player than probably offensive, despite you know Russell Wilson having that great QBR last year. Um, he comes to mind, but a guy that I don't think anybody's really talking about yet is uh, RPO Polly, and he's um, two and zero, <laughs> and he's allowing I think only four, I think he's only given up like five, under fifty rush yards through two games so far. Um, and if he and something about dump in the playoffs, he goes away from what he's really good at. Like he'll kill on the ground with Edens last year, and then in the playoffs he wants to be air raid, you know Texas Tech style, and he that's not his style this year being going through the air is his style and you know it wouldn't surprise me in the playoffs he switches it up tries to go ground and pound and he runs into a guy like Pauly who is really good at stopping the run so far uh so I would say the one of those two guys I'm um, not ready to put my team in there because I just don't have the overalls to run with guys like Hopkins Kyler and you know the other guys yeah that that would be my biggest concern for your team uh my my answer is pretty similar you know I, I think regular season wise dump is gonna just just clean up the league here i think he realistically has about two difficult games on his schedule remaining he has bomber in week six and then he has uh he has you q in week 15 i think those are probably the only two games looking at the schedule you can even consider as a potential loss i think the rest are are pretty easy w's uh the offense is flying kyler murray like already almost has a thousand yards i think through three games so, uh, so that, that's pretty wild. And obviously, you know, the overalls on defense in season one make a big difference. Uh, it's interesting you would bring up Pauly. Uh, I didn't think much about it. I looked over at his stats, and my goodness, um, he's giving up eight, eight points a game, <laughs> mm-hmm. which is easily first in the league. He's mm-hmm. uh, 216 total yards, which is first, 196 pass yards, which is third, and 20 
yards on the ground a game, which is first. Um, he is actually only struggling at the one thing that everybody else seems to have down, which is offense. Uh, if Polly can, you know, kind of turn that around and, and this defense stays very good, you know, that, that's going to be a tough game. Uh, another one is NYT. Uh, I think could be a tough game. We just uh, played, you know, about an hour, a couple hours ago. Um, and he really, you know, outplayed me for a majority of that game. Uh, his his thing right now is is trying to figure out defense for sure. Um, but, you know, I, I think uh, – I think he's got a shot, uh, but those are you know probably your three NFC front runners. I think Q, you're talent wise up there, but uh, team wise, I, th- I think is going to hurt you. And Clink, I'm I'm excited to see what you do with the Saints. I think you have a little bit of building to do there as well. But uh, you know, I, I definitely agree with you guys that that playoff hump is going to be you know what we see. Uh, maybe gets a dump, and then you know, quick follow up question on that. You know, seeing how good he started, seeing the division dump picked. If he doesn't make the Super Bowl this season, I mean, how much of a letdown is that for Dump? And either one of you can can answer. Oh, it's a big letdown. Yeah. Um, he's got probably the best team with the best user in the NFC. Um, I think, you know, there's other really talented users in the NFC. But as far as a combination of a team that's built to already succeed and built for Madden to to go out and win a championship paired with a user who's competent he's got the best one um i think paul is the, the second best combination there uh, with a very close second but it's it's a big disappointment to me if he doesn't uh make it to the super bowl this year yeah any thoughts on that q yeah uh, just everything he said reiterating that statement it's he he has Isaiah Simmons on the other side. He can use her. He's a pretty good, like you said, competent user. Won't say he's one of the best, but he's a really solid one. Uh, great team. And in the way this Madden is designed, you can't stop a fast quarterback this year yet. They haven't patched that just yet. Um, so the way he plays, he already had a little bit of taste with Hurts last year, and he was that's he was much less than what Kyler is. So I'll call it a disappointment if he doesn't win. But we are expecting him to not win or make it to the Super Bowl. So we'll, we'll kind of see how that plays out. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's definitely a, you know kind of wait until you see it. Uh, so this is going to take us to our, our second topic here. Another uh, another quick early season overreaction. This one we're coming back to the AFC. This is going to be hotly discussed, I'm sure, on just about every single show. How long is Dan going to slide? I mean, we're starting 0 and 3 here. We've got losses to NYT, to Grams, and then uh, most recently to Prime. He's got RD and Bomber coming up. Uh, this is, you know, not a not a great start. It's not looking like it's going to get much better. How long do you guys think this goes on for? Q, you can start on this one. Uh, he's he's going to lose games more than maybe he ever has in uh, SML history. He has one of the highest winning percentages of active users, um, even all-time highest winning percentages. I think he was the first to reach 100 and the fastest and all these great accolades. And I think this year he might – lose almost as much as he lost last year he'll lose about eight games this season i wouldn't be surprised if he does i don't know how long the slide goes as far as uh winless but i could definitely see him having a nine and eight season or one of those like ten and seven seasons where we really don't expect it from dan Uh, because he hasn't seemed to figure it out he has like i heard on the the other shows is he hasn't he can't pass yet here he's shown he can't pass yet in a pretty pass favorable league so far or i should say game so far um, so I could see him sliding and maybe even missing the playoffs this year. Yeah, I tend to agree. Um, I have, you know, D- Dan's got a pretty tough schedule as far as users go. You know, you got RD, he's got Bomber next, back to back. He's got some pretty easy matchups after that with the Ravens, Patriots, Eagles. If he doesn't figure it out in those three games, though, going eight and nine, ten and seven, somewhere in that range is definitely a possibility. And, and missing the playoffs here is something i could i could definitely see for the first time in a very long time from dan um as far as how long the slide goes you know i, I think it's going to go into season two until he figures out how to perfectly use uh herbert in the in the system um i feel like in the preseason you know when he's, he's testing out teams he did a lot of testing with um the panthers you know, he's them in, in another league, and he's crushing it over there. And I think the Chargers are just a very different team. They're built differently. They're not as fast on defense. They're not as fast as off- on offense. 
Um, and so trying to figure out how to use two very different style teams is something that I think he's uh, not quite caught on with yet. Um, now, if he gets on a tear here in the next few games, if he gets a good good matchup to RD and Bomber, you know, it could obviously turn around. But as what I'm seeing right now, you know, I, I don't think eight and nine is out of the realm of possibilities. Yeah, I've I've been playing with Dan since uh, I believe it was Madden sixteen, Madden seventeen, uh, and I have I have never seen him like this. Uh, not even just you know in the sense of the losses. I mean I've you know seen him have some seasons where he drops more games than you would expect. But this is these are different kind of losses. You know these are losses where you, I mean you can even see it in chat. I mean the guy is poor guy's just dejected. You know, just I, I have no answers. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to play defense. Uh, he's he's not passing well. Like the like the man is the man is hurting. Um, so you know that that's a different type of slide that I, I've never really seen from Dan. I mean, Polly calls him the Madden Messiah, and it's it's for good reason. The guy, you know, his Madden knowledge is always off the charts. So to see him just kind of kind of sputtering, he he can't figure out what you know passing concepts he likes. He's you know running around like a chicken without a head on defense. It's uh, it's it's definitely tough to watch, and you know, Clink, like you were saying, his schedule is not easy. Um, obviously, with with RD and Bomber coming up, he's still gonna have one more against Prime. He's gonna have one more against RD. Uh, he has Demuse later on. Matt is not even you know a great matchup for somebody who's struggling offensively. Uh, if, if Matt just starts pounding the ball, running the clock, and you're not moving the ball, that's that's frustrating, and uh, and that could you know spell trouble for him as well. He's going to have some easy ones in here where, you know, I, I think he's going to going to figure it out. I can definitely see him still sneaking into the, the playoff race. Obviously, if he does that, anything can happen. But uh, this is this has definitely been a been a tough start to watch. That's that's for sure. So, you know, personally, I'm rooting for him. I, I think it's better for the league when, you know, Dan is, is successful and, and playing well. And we all want to see, you know, the the Dan prime playoff matchups, the, the Dan me playoff matchups. So. You know, hope, hopefully figures it out. So sliding, uh, staying in the AFC, third topic here. We just talked about Dan. He's sliding. You obviously then have, you know, the AFC is loaded. I believe with the exception of DMUs, I think every Super Bowl representative from Madden 21 is in the AFC. Um, so with that said, and with, you know, some, some early records, who do you guys have as your front runners in the AFC? So, Clink, take this one away first. So, I hate to do it for, I feel like, the fifth season in a row, but I'm going with Bomber to start it all. Um, I think Bomber's just playing really well. He's got his rounds. He knows how to use them. He has figured out how to how to run efficiently in this Madden, which I think if you can, if you can do that this year, it is going to set you above everyone else. Um, there's a lot of guys struggling with the run game because it's not press X and hold up anymore. You actually have to be patient, find the holes, get them to speed, and break a tackle or two, get lucky here or there. And with Chubb, you can definitely do that. With Hunt, you can do that, although I think he traded Hunt. He you? did, yes. Uh, but with Chubb, I mean, you don't need you don't even need Hunt when you have Chubb, and, nope. and this game doesn't require a, a, a committee backfield. Um, and I feel like he's a better passer than know what he's done so far his his overall stats have him at 24th in passing but he just hasn't really had to pass much I mean he's got 45 attempts through two games which isn't not a whole lot you know it's a what 20 23 per game Mm -hmm. Um, he's completed 65 percent of them three touchdowns one pick so you know he's moving the ball fine through the air Um, and if somebody ever forces him to do that I think he's going to be able to, to turn it on this game obviously it favors passers good passers so you know i think uh to me he's definitely the the early front runner we'll see how the season progresses here yeah absolutely and i mean as far as running back by committee you know don't be uh, don't be hating on the buffalo committee here we're, we're running every back we can find and we're we're kind of enjoying it for you know all seven times i give the ball to my running backs in a game um <laughs> q what are, what are your thoughts on the afc front runner 
Well, it's hard to actually, in my opinion, not go you based on what you just did uh, did to meet. Um, from what I saw, I know you missed the first game, so it's hard to tell. Where I'm judging you off of one game so far, but I would say you, as uh, one of the front runners, I think that you have a personnel that can do it. Um, obviously, Josh Allen is very, very good. Stephon Diggs is very, very good, and then you have a underrated couple guys with him, like with Dawson Knox, who's a sleeper tight end. Um, but I'd say Prime as well, because Prime, he's he's two and one, but he's really airing the ball a lot. He's doing pretty well offensively. Um, it's his defense that he has to figure out, and if he figures out at least you know how to get to the middle of the pack defensively, I can definitely see him being. Uh, up there and you guys can have a showdown and when the AFC championship game comes around um, not to discredit or dismiss bomber as well but I'd say those two are my two choices yeah so I, I play prime uh, in week five so uh, I believe next advance um, no two two advances two advances um, and that that's gonna be a fun game obviously he's still figuring out you know watching him play with the Chiefs you can tell he's still kind of feeling out his his team how he's gonna play. Uh, some of his plays against Dan was just kind of like, you know, pray and chuck it up. And I mean, thankfully with the Chiefs, that's the one team you can really get away with that with. Um, you know, defense, definitely a struggle. That, that Chiefs defense is not nearly as good out of the box as uh, some of the other AFC teams. Browns definitely ahead of it. Chargers ahead of it. Bills similar. I think the I think my Bills team is a little ahead of his uh, off the bat. He really just has Matthew and uh, and Jones and the rest of the defense is, is just projects. So I, I'm interested to see. I think as Prime starts to find his groove, I think he's definitely gonna gonna end up a lock for the AFC Championship. Um, one reason I would lean Bomber, and I, I haven't you know seen enough games to really set my opinion on this, but uh, I think offensive line is definitely gonna make a difference in this game. Uh, just you know based off of you know some some early early games I've seen playing meets, I could feel it for sure. His offensive line is terrible, and, and my team just you know, had their way with uh, with them in the trenches. I think you get, you know, the Chiefs offensive line, uh, or the Chiefs defensive line up against the, the Browns offensive line. I don't think he's getting any pressure, which is going to make things uh, make things pretty easy on Bomber. And especially like Clink said, you know, he's currently running Chubb almost more effectively than probably anybody else in the league. Uh, and Chubb obviously has all the abilities on top. I think that could set Bomber apart. So, uh you know, I, I think right now I'm leaning Bomber. Obviously, he has the same thing with Dump, where you know we haven't seen him do it in the playoffs yet. Uh, he seems to freeze up sometimes. He can, he can get a little tense. But uh, I, I think right now in Season 1, this is the time for, for Bomber to do it. So, uh, I mean, that's going to take us through our, our first three here. So we're going to go back to, to SML. Come on, man. Uh, I'm excited for this uh, this segment. Uh, no gameplay footage just yet. We're going to try and slide that in for uh, for future episodes. But, Clank, kick us off. To give us our first SNL come on, man, of the early season. Oh, man. My come on, man, starts in the NFC East. Um, tiny. My man. You play against Figs, who's known to throw many interceptions, not be able to move the ball through the air in a game, especially at favors moving the ball through the air Trey Lance throws for 81 yards and three touchdowns and you find a way to lose by 10 points Oof. <laughs> I mean come on man how, come how on man in, how are you coming in with that stat against that stat line giving up 163 yards on the ground with the Eagles D line which is probably the only good thing on that defense right now and losing by 10 points and you got to figure it out on, on offense it seems you got to find a way to outscore a team like that when, you, when you're forcing turnovers come on man yeah that's that that's a tough go Q who, who do you got yeah, it's a tough go, and I heard you mention 81 pass yards. Um, <laughs> that's something that I'm going to have to mention as well. This is going to go to Otto Shermatic, the AFC East. We're going to stay in the East, and it's going to be Otto Shermatic. Otto, you're averaging 8.5 points per game. That is a touchdown and a prime special two-point conversion uh, per game, just one of those. Um, so I would have to say, come on, man, you're averaging 81 uh, pass yards per game. I know Mac Jones isn't the best guy to start with, uh, but with the way this Madden is set up, you should be able to get the ball 81 yards in at least a half. 
Um, if you're familiar with the American Pie movies, just like the Shermanator, you, my friend, you're wet in the bed, um, and you're not doing it the right way offensively. So I'd have to say, come on, man. Yes, that's uh, I gotta say that the Buffalo defense is, is licking their chops, looking at those uh, looking at those offensive numbers. So mine, this is gonna be you know a running theme through uh, pretty much anybody who's been in chat or one of my streams recently. Matt, come on, my guy, what are we doing? We're talking about how bad defense is all the time. Defense is broken. Defense is broken. He puts it everywhere. He's he's out on the streets. He's with you know. The, the dude was signed on Instagram. Defense in Madden 22 is broken. Then he goes out and he plays RD <clears throat> and gets his cheeks clapped. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How are you going to throw four picks? You're going to get sacked six times. You're going to fumble two more times on that. Six turnovers, six sacks. Gives up 42 points. This is the Raiders' defense, man. This is not the Browns' defensive line. We're talking about I don't think there's any superstars in this, this defense like at all. Uh, RD's running like strictly man coverage with an underdeveloped team. I mean, come on, man. Defense is just not as bad as you seem to think it is. Because otherwise, you would be able to do a little better than 42 to 14. Oh, 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 oh. ugly, ugly, ugly. Matt, come on, man. That is just, that, that's just, that's unacceptable to me. I, I got nothing for that one. Six sacks. Six! No come superstars. On, come on, man. But uh, but that's all we've got for you. We are we're right at 21 minutes, uh, which is you know right around our, our target goal. Uh, happy to be back. Happy to be playing SML games. Clink Q, thank you guys for coming on, uh, and I'm excited. Yes, we will see you guys next time.